Welcome to Revive Mercy Podcast. Today we continue the theme, Growing in Our Recovery. Recovery can be messy, but even though it may not seem, you might not see immediate results, we can at times take steps towards recovery today. Today we have a new guest, Kyla Koffer. I hope I said that correctly. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming on and sharing your insight and your experience. Not, um, you know, in recovery, you know, we're all community. We have, you know, we have maybe family members, loved ones, or even ourselves. So I, I'm well, thank you, Kyla, for taking the time to come on. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I want to share with those who are listening uh, across the world, but also in the, in the United States. Uh, if you are in crisis, the number is 1 800 273 8255. I do believe they're trying to make it 788 by the or something like that 988 by this summer make it shorter but this is a hotline for those who are you know in crisis whether you are thinking of suicide or you're with someone who is struggling this is a good line to think of dialing but if you're around the the world i do encourage you to find what resources are there Kyla, I always say people say things better than i do um we're gonna go all the way back to helen keller she says it this way Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming of it. What what does the quote speak to you? How, how does it? Yeah, I love this quote. And it reminds me of several others. Um, as soon as I hear it, I'm thinking of quotes by Fred Rogers, who says something similar about, um, you know, when they're suffering and we'll look for the helpers. Or the Reverend Oscar Romero, who says about, I can't get his quote correctly, but he has a prayer and it talks about... Um, do the small things well and don't feel like the it, it, the, sum, the summary is that the whole world isn't your responsibility mm. and so when i re- think of this about helen keller the world is full of suffering but also full of the overcoming of it suffering is not new i mean mm. we're looking around the world right now we see um a russian invasion of ukraine we see um bills that in the united states um government bills that actually are harming people we mm. see um i mean there there's poverty there's um starvation there's slavery there's so many things going on around the world and mm. it's really easy especially because we have instant access to the information now mm-hmm. to feel so overwhelmed by it mm-hmm. but when we look for the helpers we look for the overcoming of that suffering I mean, we are all in the process of that overcoming and um when i say suffering is not new i mean suffering is um something that every human has understood at some point in their lives and so it's just really beautiful to me to see how we do overcome it we do work through it we don't always it doesn't disappear but every single one of us finds ways to work through it and to help each other and help the community to do that and when we're feeling that suffering it's i think it's really important to look around at the people who are 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 serving, are, are helping, or who are working to alleviate that suffering, because there's always people working to alleviate that. There's always compassion, there's always caring, and there's always that love that, that works that. So uh, it's a really powerful quote. It is. And, you know, I, I, I there's this book my, my wife has, it's untranslatable words. I'm going to, I don't know even how to say this word. Anyway, it's from Chile. It's, it says, a solid acknowledgement and understanding between two people who are both wishing things, wishing or thinking the same thing. A lot of us right now, <laughs> like sometimes, you know, especially in recovery when you're, or when you're struggling, you can kind of look at the person next to you. Maybe, you know, maybe you're in, maybe you're in AA, or if you're maybe in a, a support group. You may be doing this because you really, you know, it's hard. It's hard to talk about these these kind of feelings, these kind of ideas, these these subjects. And I, I find that um, sometimes we kind of could tell by body language, this the kind of support or maybe even just acknowledgement that I understand maybe that you are going through something similar. Um, that's what I love about the safe place model. Safe, you know, the idea that, you know, it's not that we, there, you know, there's saturation information, like you said, you know, yeah. there's so much information out there um, that I think sometimes it's overwhelming. But sometimes with that information, we may 
lead us to some, you know, what do you buy or do may maintain a better life? You know, sometimes our bar is so low when it comes to these ideas. We want the certain to be the uncertainty to be certain. And um, that sometimes can be problematic. I'm going to hear from you before we hear a little bit more about you. What have you seen that worked and what has not worked in regards to in recovery and as a whole and in overall wellness? What have you seen has been helpful, um, whether you're struggling with a mental illness or substance use or not or just struggling right now? I'm sure a lot of people are. So what would you say? has worked and not yeah worked. well i think that's a really broad question that can have like a lot of different answers and so um, you know thinking um broadly i i think there are two things that are really crucial in any well-being journey and the first is connection mm-hmm. building connections with yourself and with other people and the second is you could call it listening or awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I mean, there it really could boil down to just connection, I guess, because that listening is connecting to yourself and connecting to other people as well. But being aware of your thoughts, your experiences, what you're, mm-hmm. what you're going through, how you're feeling, your emotions, thoughts and emotions, listening around you, what are other people going through? What, mm-hmm. what are you hearing from other people? What are you learning from other people? What are, are, other people saying or doing in in that arena in that Mm. same situation that you've gone through so like i said suffering isn't new so whatever you're going through it's quite possible that somebody else has gone through it before and now with such wide worldwide access to resources and information you can probably find that person who's gone through it before and say how did you get through this and um Mm. and how can we support each other through this because connection man when you're really connected to yourself, knowing mm-hmm. your own wants, mm-hmm. needs, mm-hmm. desires, emotions, mm-hmm. um, that is where change and growth starts to happen. And peace also lives there in that place. Mm-hmm. And then um, connecting to other people, you're building that community, that support network where people are supporting you. You're supporting them. It's that mutual, mm-hmm. that give and take, that friendship and, mm-hmm. and being part of a community. You know, this is why, you know, I'm not in recovery, but um, I have many family members who are, and this is why recovery groups are so powerful. Uh, mm-hmm. When I'm talking about, I'm talking about um, addiction recovery. Um, so mm-hmm. addiction support groups are so powerful because you're in that connection with other people yeah and you go oh not only am i not alone mm-hmm. but somebody else understands where i am and they've been there and their perspective is just as unique as mine and we can go through this together it's it's incredibly powerful yeah and i like how like all like i like what you're saying in the idea of reflecting on ourselves being aware of ourselves you know, support groups allows that safe place to do it because most time we don't have that safe place or if we don't um, give us time or set boundaries of the time to reflect. You know, it's one of the things that a lot of times we um, we struggle with. And sometimes this is one word, another word, I'm taking it, it's harass. It's from Welsh. It says a homesickness of somewhere you cannot return to the nostalgia and grief of the lost place of your past places that never were Mm. sometimes when you look at back at your past you have kind of a skewed kind of one-dimensional idea of what had happened if you don't allow yourself to reflect on it and understand and sometimes it's just getting to the derivative of what you were feeling at that time you know it could be like yeah yeah, like um yeah i'm just thinking about my math when i was in college and all this but with derivatives it's this idea of Get into the simplest form. I am sad. I don't feel appreciated. I am not heard. And like these things that seem very small, but they're very, they kind of, if if unchecked or un, you know, reflected on, it can lead to other bitterness that is not really. You get these secondary responses that you don't really dive deeper into. Um, yeah. I think so. This is such a good word. This is such a good word for that description that like (laughs) that, that feeling, um, I can't, I think about, you know, returning to places that I'd been to as a kid and you remember them bigger than they actually are. Right. Like you think that the playground was huge and you go and you're like, I was intimidated by that (laughs) or just, um, a house that we 
lived in or the street that we grew up on or mm. a moment or a feeling like that feeling of a relationship um mm. that you know you thought that that was the one that got away or something mm. you know yeah, yeah. that feeling of a relationship but really you didn't have it it just you thought that you did you know this place uh, where that's such a that's a fun word yeah and at the same time you know we were talking about reflecting we talk about you know um you know so knowing what you want i remember you saying that knowing what you want what you need that is rare nowadays very rare because i'm like it's understandable because everyone's telling you what you need everyone's telling you what you want and it's 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 cumbersome if you're not able to put those boundaries say you know i may not need to do this because you know, a lot of times we can get caught up in it before we get into that i want to hear more about you um would you mind sharing for those listening any little bit about yourself and like um in regards to your story what brought you to be passionate about what you like describe what you do and um anything else you want to share on your story with my listeners of of course absolutely (laughs) well my name is kyla kofer i am a leadership and self-care coach and what that means is I am a certified life coach with a history um, background in um, psychology, human services, and my so that's my educational background. Um, but I have a ton of experience in leadership. I've been leading the way and speaking publicly since I was 15 years old. Um, but this turned into several years ago for me talking specifically about leadership and self-care because of my own experiences with burnout and low self-worth and um, putting those things together with my my education, I've come up with a program for training leaders on how to lead sustainably. So to lead without burning out, without exhaustion, which really applies specifically to nonprofit leaders. And I mean, I train corporate leaders, I train all sorts of leaders, but um, what I love to train is nonprofit leaders because nonprofit leaders love to give with like exhaustion, love to just give, 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 you know, we're the helpers as we talked about that Helen Keller quote the, and Fred Rogers quote the um, look for the helpers. Well, helpers sometimes give without boundaries. It's like this giving um, without stopping because you have this need to help and to give and to, to have that feeling of being and doing something for other people. And so uh, I, I've struggled with that myself. And through that struggle, I've learned how to do that sustainably so that I don't burn out and I'm not exhausted uh, because it's really important. You know, and we'll get into this more, I know, but um, to, to take care of yourself enough so that you can make the changes in the world that you want to make and that you want to be part of. So I do that through leadership and self care coaching. I'm also a podcast host as well. I host the Leadership School podcast where I interview leaders from around the world on what it means to lead with integrity and life balance. I have some amazing leaders um, who talk about their practical tips alongside their actual experience in leadership. And so it's a great tool for your leadership journey. Uh, So I do um, the coaching, I do training, corporate training, I do nonprofit training, group coaching, keynote speaking and the podcast i'm kind of all over but um i do i do all of those things on top of that personally i am a mom i have two young kids five Mm. and three um so they're actually going to bed right now i hope somewhere (laughs) Um, so uh, they're they're young and i stay at home and take care of them oh that's wonderful um so you said um burnout you know you're on on the verge of burnout you know a lot of people uh yeah sometimes it's kind of shamed or kind of guilted like oh you burned out you just don't know how to set your schedule you don't know how to say no it's it it seems so superficial but i feel that it's more than that because it's unique to the individual unique to the circumstance or 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 the or i guess the leadership if we're talking about leadership at the time leadership style or the kind of um what you say um um, environment you know you say nonprofit. there's you know there's a lot of like uh, there's one word i was going to say it for later it's it's hindi it says to god it says ensuring that things happen even with minimal resources that's the name of the game for a lot of people and so, uh, human so- resources trying to help people in the community little resources burning out happens a lot happens yeah. more than we'd like to admit um 
And it's a huge topic right now, burnout is, especially with the pandemic. You know, you've got the great resignation, millions of people quitting their jobs. A lot of this is a corporate responsibility. It's really, um, there, there are two parts to burnout. Uh, so let's, do you mind if I just talk about no, it for no, a minute? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. So the actual definition of burnout, let's start there. It is the, um, it is extreme mental, physical, or emotional exhaustion from mm. overwork or stress. So when you're thinking about the very basic level of burnout, you're having like this extreme reaction to your overwork and your stress. So burnout itself could be, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the mental aspect, you could experience things like extreme anger, stress, mm -hmm. anxiety, like worries mm -hmm. that don't stop, um, fears, those kinds of mental, mental pressures. Um, and then physically, it can actually take a toll on your body. You, we already know this about stress. You know mm. that I mean, this is scientifically proven that stress takes a toll on your body, it releases cortisol, you have pain, all these things. Um, but you'll not start in burnout when you're burned out. You'll start noticing these physical signs. I start noticing it for me in my side right here, my um, intestinal, my GI tract, that I start having pains here, and I'm like, oh, something's hurting. I need to step back. I need to rest. Take take a minute. You might notice that everybody, everybody's going to have their own sign. It could be headaches, um, hair loss. It could be, um, you know, just extreme fatigue, exhaustion. So you're going to have these signs that are, they're showing you. Your body wants to tell you to slow down. So if you're starting to notice some of these things, mm. start slowing down. Uh, and they could also be, you may, you may also want to talk to a doctor. I'm not a, med, a physician, yeah, so I'm yeah. not going to say not talk to your doctor. But if you're starting to notice some severe things, you definitely need to slow down and get some assistance. So those are some of the very basics of burnout. And that's on a personal level. Well, now we're going to talk about the corporate level with this um, company burnout. If you're burnt out at your job, that I believe is a company responsibility. Uh, and we're seeing right now a lot of companies who are really investing in the well being of their employees and this cultural shift in understanding how important it is for a company, an organization, like a nonprofit organization, to take ownership and responsibility for how well their employees are on a both mental and physical level. You know, we've all companies have traditionally for, I don't know, 30, 40 years been providing health insurance benefits, but now we're seeing a lot more uh, mental health wellness benefits um, in there. And also in the structuring of the way the company works and the company is organized. So if you are working 70 hours a week for your company, there's something mm. wrong if they're allowing that to happen. Uh, mm. if you're working, and that's why people are resigning like crazy because they're saying, I'm not gonna work in this environment anymore that's not going to allow me rest, recorporation, mm. the appropriate resources to do my job. Mm. All of these things have to be in place to have a successful job or you're gonna have people leaving because you don't, especially during this pandemic, people have realized that we want to live our lives. We don't want our mm -hmm. lives to be defined by exhaustion and stress from working so hard. Um, and if companies are expecting that out of people, that people are going to be leaving. So yeah. there is some corporate responsibility there. Yeah, and I, I, I it's interesting because I, um, we're reading a lot about the culture, like, kind of like how busyness has been kind of attributed as successful, like mm -hmm. being more busy and. It wasn't always the case, you know, back in back back in the day, if you were a leisurely person, you were well off, you, you were successful. But now it's like you have to be super busy doing a lot of things at once. And um, I find that that culturally and like, I don't just see it in Western, but I see a lot of cultures that, you know, if you're not busy, you're just not being successful. And I feel that's where the personal and how you set those personal boundaries really do and defining what is successful because you know the work-life balance is different for everyone i feel and i feel people have different um goals you know um i remember i was talking before we had this podcast you talked about um uh, rhythms you know life rhythms and and uh, you know why is it important to create diversity in activity and life rhythms helpful for yeah. those in full schedules and verge of burnout. Like, you know, sometimes um, I had an interesting conversation. I'll let you answer this. Uh, 
one person loves to maybe go to church a lot like i i'm a leader in church so sometimes i go to church and some people are like well you're you, you know you're you did a lot of work this week you shouldn't go but i feel better like whatever the activity is so you know i think it's not just not doing things it's doing things in a certain way and you know exactly <laughs> you nailed it you nailed it you know and uh, it's really interesting it, um i i just had a conversation about this recently and um it the work-life balance term is really it's thinking that like we have to spend a certain amount of per, a certain percentage of our life working and a certain percentage of our life not working yeah. what if like you just love what you do and it fills you up and gives you energy mm -hmm. you know um they're finding that balance is um what are the things that i'm doing that give me life mm -hmm. and not take away my life yeah, yeah. you know and and yes we have to rest so you can't be working all the time you do have to rest <laughs> yeah um but maybe rest is work is restful for you depending on what that task is or what that work is maybe mm -hmm. it's a rest from another activity you know um sometimes work for me is restful because it means i'm not parenting in that moment and parenting <laughs> yeah. can be really exhausting so yeah finding that balance of um what are the things that are really giving me life that i'm putting my effort my energy and my time into and you mentioned um life rhythms so you've got this question up here it's so good because um you know i am a huge proponent of creating life rhythms versus mm. routines mm. so for me this is what that means when i hear the word routine i think structure so i think mm -hmm. you're gonna get up at 5 30 a.m you're gonna drink a full glass of water then a green drink then have this breakfast then you're gonna go for a run and then you're gonna meditate then you're going to uh, write out your goals for the day and then you know you have all these things whatever that that perfect life is or that structure that you've created for yourself you you do everything at the exact same time every day and there's not flexibility in that and mm. and that's not for everybody that's just the way i hear the word routine you know as <laughs> i hear that routine is so structured so for me i use the word rhythms life rhythms which mm. um incorporates flexibility for me especially as a working business owner um who with stay-at-home mom mm. that i have to be flexible in my routines with things mm. routine there mm. i use the word um but i have to be flexible in how I, I i go about things and be ready that you know i need to do the dishes right now but i also have a child who needs attention and a business um email to respond to so i need to be a little bit more flexible in how i go about that so what i when i'm creating a rhythm i'm creating things of i'm going to spend time on this activity today i'm going to spend time on that activity today and i'm going to spend time on this activity maybe kind of spread them out a little bit and i know that the just dishes will get done but they might not if i want them done at nine o'clock a.m they might not get done till 9 p.m but they will get done um the emails that i need to send well you know, it might not get done between nine and five. It might get done at seven, but it's gonna get done and it's you, things are gonna adjust and it's like this ebb and flow. I like, I'm making myself dizzy moving um, <laughs> in the video, uh, but it's this ebb and flow of things more than the, um, the strictness of it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're in that mode of feeling exhausted, feeling burnt out, adding in more to-do lists it can be too much you mm. know especially if you're in this like what i call survival mode mm. you just have to get through the day <laughs> you've got all these pressures on mm. you all these things that have to get done between work and family and um tragedy or trauma and your own health and um eating well and getting active physical activity whatever these things are in your life um you might just be in this mode of like, this is a season and I'm just trying to survive and get through the day. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, that's a season and we have to acknowledge that and not try and put these unrealistic expectations on ourselves. of, well, if you're not drinking that green drink and getting 30 minutes of exercise and meditating for an hour, well, then you failed. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is not what recovery is about. Recovery is learning how to incorporate new rhythms and elements in our life that fit, that that bring us that life, that give us life, um, that fuel our purpose, and help us get out of that survival mode into a place of thriving and well-being. 
I, you know, I, I really like what you were kind of really saying when I was hearing when you're saying uh, routine, I, I think of like the same thing, not the same. I feel it's for me, it's a fear of complacency, like this lie we tell ourselves that everything is um, is fine because it's kind of like we're on autopilot. Um, Albert Einstein once said uh, the measure of intelligence is the ability, the ability to adapt to change. You know, it just makes sense to me that I know it's just verbiage. You know, sometimes people may say um, routine means can be pliable, can be flexible, and that's fine. But for me, uh, routine is not bad. It's good to have some sort of structure uh, that you kind of gain a routine in, like kind of like you know maybe do something healthy, a healthy positive you know factor in your life. I want to eat better or whatever it may be. But life keeps changing. Like uh, we does. obviously, hey, I saw like uh, there's life events that happen, and sometimes um, if we're lost in it, if we're not reflecting, like we've been talking about, if you don't know what you want or why you want it, <laughs> it, it can be problematic. These routines, I feel, because it doesn't really shape reality um, in a more honest approach. Like you don't really know what's going on around you because you haven't drank the green tea. A green drink at 8 30 it's it's kind of hilarious but i'm just trying to say um i think there always has to be something a little bit flexible especially you know each individual has their own um i guess degree of threshold of how flexible or, or, or mm -hmm. structured they need and but for me i feel with growth and as we talk about growth you can't kind of just you know you know sometimes things need to kind of change sometimes things around you your environment change life events happen which may prompt you to kind of reassess and maybe change you know the biggest worry i have is like you said if i don't do this drink this green drink i don't eat this or this it becomes very discouraging because what if you know you continue adding the task what i need to do and you're a completionist, I would say, in like in a, <laughs> in a video game. And you're like, okay, I'm not getting any of this done. You're getting bitter, but it's really not about that. It's about like you never feel you have time. But you well, then you're have... never gonna feel enough either. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. constantly feel like you failed and like you're not good enough. And what kind of a life is that? That's I have I have lived enough of my life thinking I'm not good enough, and I'm done with that line of thinking <laughs> because it's not true. I would never believe that for you. I would never believe that for even my enemies or mm. even for the people I don't like in my neighborhood. I would never say that you're just not good enough. You mm. know, I think that we, that if we put those, all those expectations on ourselves, then we're just setting ourselves up to fail and to think poorly of ourselves when no, we're meant to think well of ourselves and to have these fruitful, abundant lives that, mm. um, that just, has all these richness and goodness flowing out of us and to do that it's not there's no way adding more things to your to-do list of uh, more things that you need to accomplish and achieve that's going to make you feel better about yourself and who you are you've got to start with what is what matters what kind of meaning am i trying to create in my life what what does what per yeah what purpose does my life have here but it's deeper than that it's what meaning am I creating here? What does my life mean? Um, and that's a really beautiful question to ask. What are the things that I hope for? What are the things that I dream about? What are the mm. things that I, uh, that bring me joy and that bring me pleasure and that bring me, um, this sense of fulfillment? Yeah. And I, I, for me, it's, I remember I, I was trying to find the quote, but I'll just kind of, um, I read the book, uh, from Victor Franco, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and he picked he's up on just, that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, he's just, he has this wonderful observation, you know, he's seeing in the concentration camps, these, you know, people who like had bread, they'll give half of it away and they'll, they'll go around checking on people. And the thing that was really, <laughs> really inspiring was that she some may say well you're giving half of your sustenance and um those people actually did better 
the people who are hopeful because the thing is like you mentioned hope they thought there was another day when we're overwhelmed when things feel like nothing's moving forward when it's raining and it's pouring sometimes like you said before i i I say to myself and even with my clients or whoever i'm with is just try to be better today that's all yeah let's try to make that's it like a lot of times we make goals why do we make goals because we forget so much we look (laughs) at the calendar it's like filled with things that we will forget and we're very forgetful but the thing about it is um I think uh, was it uh, Maya Angelou said it this way: "You may you may teach us things that we'll forget, um, whatever. But how you made me feel is what I remember." And I'm paraphrasing. It's yeah. not like a lot of times it's people don't take much account of how we treat ourselves, how we say things to others. There's a lot of urgency, and I would even venture the idea of fear. You have a structure. Because you're afraid if you get out of the structure, things will fall apart. Yeah. But the things keep changing. So unfortunately, we, we, we kind of more put more to-do lists. And I'm not saying this for everyone, that we get to the point of burnout. Because And then we, unfortunately, because I've seen this in different, in different parts of people's lives, and then what happens is they become, they may become bitter. And then no one wants to be around. And it's sad because initially they wanted to do it for a good reason. I remember this one speaker said, you know, he asked the question to this one five star chef. Why do you cook? Why do you cook? And he he, he, all these why questions. And he said, and they came down, boiled it down because he liked bringing people together. I know for me, I love connecting. You were saying sort of. So, you know, when I structure my day, when I'm with someone, I'm with them. Like, yeah. it's, it's, that's it. So I want to ask you, as you know, we could talk about this forever, but would you mind sharing with us some signs to pay attention to if, when you're being overwhelmed? And what yeah. actions may be helpful for those? And I say may because everyone has different things that may, they may pick up. That's what in support groups, you kind of hear other people's stories because you may pick some from here, from there. So what what might be helpful for them uh diving into their work to avoid burnout Anything? yeah absolutely well i mentioned a few of them earlier so some yeah. things that you might notice like mentally and emotionally is that anger if you're if you just feel like this sense of anger that you can't control is coming up all the time and you're not normally a super angry person mm-hmm. pay attention to that if you're um you're more worried than normal if you're worried about things that maybe are are smaller and significant um mm-hmm. notice your worries and your stress levels notice your physical body like are you breathing What's your breath like? Do you are you holding your breath? Are you taking breaths during throughout the day? Are you paying attention to actually how you're breathing, or are you just like holding all your breath in? You know, like you might not ever get to the other one. Mm. Um, physical pains, shoulders, tension in your shoulders, in your back, um, your digestive system is not going to function as properly. Um, heart issues. So um, that's a big one that sends people to the hospital. Actually, you'll notice the heart palpitations mm-hmm. and you're, you'll start feeling like you're having a heart attack or chest pains. And mm-hmm. so you go to the hospital, the doctor says, how's your stress level? And you say, I am extremely stressed. And they say, all right, we'll figure it out or I'll see you in a month. You know, um, so your chest pains, your hair falling out. Um, that's it. That's a, um, a sign as well. So, uh, you know, your hair might fall out and it not be, it might not be a sign of burnout, but that is one sign. So kind of when you're seeing all these things put together and think about your workload, think about the, what's going on in your life and the, you know, ask yourself the question, could this be burnout? And there's so many resources available and I'm happy to talk to anybody who's wanting to know, is this what I'm experiencing? We can talk through it um, together. I have a lot of tips for burnout healing and prevention. We can go together. Um, but yeah, what those things that, that you may want to pay attention to now, as far as what actions might be helpful, mm-hmm. um, I have a three step process that I want to walk you through quickly. The first one is like we've already mentioned. Can... My video here. All right. Um, notice your, all of your connections with, um, yourself with others, where, where are your connections? And just know that you cannot heal and you will never have well-being 
without connection, without connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the next step is healing, is thinking through, okay, what does my health look like? What's my mental health, my physical health? Um, mm -hmm. where, where am I at? Being really aware of that and knowing what you need, finding resources for your own mental and your own physical health, whether that's a um, psychotherapist, a life coach, a medical provider, um, knowing your own body and what you need for your own physical health. And the best example I have for this is a diabetic. You know, if you're diabetic, you need to know how to manage your diabetes. Your doctor's not going to be coming to your house three times a day, pricking your finger, checking your insulin and telling you, oh, eat that food and not that food. You have to know these things for yourself. So it's the same thing with every medical condition, knowing your own health, getting the resources to care for it. It's exactly the same thing for mental health as well. Know what your mental health is know what resources you need, what medications you need, what support community you need, um, and seek those out. And the next thing is act, act acting out, um, not acting out, <laughs> um, <laughs> taking actions, taking <laughs> steps like maintaining your um, physical health, eating well, getting some movement in your day. That doesn't mean I'm having to uh, work out 30 minutes, seven days a week. You know, it just means, okay, can I, are you watching me wiggle my body here? Like, can I still stand up, sit down, do the things that my body, whatever its limitations are, um, can do. So making sure that you can do those things. Setting boundaries, taking action to set boundaries with your life, with your, with yourself, with your relationships, you know, boundaries are an action for your own well-being. So thinking through those three things, connecting, healing, acting, I call it the cha-cha, you repeat it over and over and over. You, mm. you, you connect with each other, you pay attention, and you take some action steps. You know, um, I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, because I should put this word before, but really the question that was leading to it was, why have you seen work? And, you know, we're talking about, you know, when I do a lot of time in my line of work in mental health, you, you have emotional coping skills and then you have practical ones. If I break my arm, I'm going to go to the doctor. <laughs> I'm going to the hospital. But if I if I lost a loved one, I have to work through it. You know, it's gonna it's not going to be quick. So sometimes those those lines get blurry. And, you know, like you said, if you have diabetes, you can't have emotional coping skills with your diabetes. You have to have a practical one. Uh, sometimes, you know, some people, you know, it's, it's hard because um, coping skills, they feel it's all in one, but it's not. You know, there's different ones that are diverse kind of groups that may work for you. And sometimes these kind of coping skills are things that may help when the resources are limited you know, in your journey or uh, in recovery. So what have you, what have you seen work in your experience? You know, when resources are limited, you know, maybe a loved one who's struggling with mental health or substance yeah. use, um, what has been helpful um, for those listening? Yeah, of course. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to repeat this thing until you all know exactly. <laughs> you never forget it again. Connect. Mm. build connections mm -hmm. look around what connections do you already have that you can tap into mm -hmm. what connections are you lacking and you're missing that you can make a little bit of an effort to go find to take that mm -hmm. action step of going and finding and building those connections but also you know when you're in survival mode the idea of trying to reach out and connect to somebody sometimes it's just too much like mm -hmm. you're in this mode of i can't even think about what is the next thing i have to do in front of me and you're asking me to go and try and reach out to people i don't even know what to say to them because i'm so exhausted mm -hmm. i i get that i hear you and i always want to say the first thing you need to do is love yourself well enough to not have all those expectations on yourself. Yeah. You don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to heal from your grief the day after your spouse dies. <laughs> you don't have to um, have everything in place all the time. Allow yourself the space that you need to go through whatever it is that you're going through. Mm. Manage your expectations well. 
don't have the expectations. You know, I've, I've experienced a lot of depression and anxiety. And when I'm really in it with depression, I cannot expect that my house is going to be spotless, that I'm mm -hmm. going to answer every email, every phone call, that I am going to save the world, that I am going to mm -hmm. go get all the things that I need done um, and live up to all these expectations in my life. I have to think about, okay, what is the one thing I could do right now? Mm -hmm. What one thing can I do? And, you know, I've even done where, okay, I'm in the, I'm in right in the middle of depression. What is one thing that I can do for myself today? Sometimes mm -hmm. that may be like, get out of bed. Well, mm -hmm. then you might get out of bed and find that you can do some other things or, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I talk about the dishes a lot because that's my job at home <laughs> and, <laughs> and the dishes take over my life when you have a house full of people. And, um, I think, okay if the only thing I get done today is wash the dishes, then I've accomplished something. And that's okay, because it won't be like that every day. This might be a season. And, yeah. and when you're acknowledging, you're, you're connecting with yourself, you're paying attention, you'll, you'll be able to see, wow, I'm really depressed right now. Something's not right. And then once you can see that, then you have the power to think, okay, so what's gonna, what am I gonna do about this? Where am I gonna be? I'm gonna go get some resources. I'm gonna get some help. Sometimes just acknowledging it is a huge step and it towards that healing. I have this quote that I um, have been repeating for years um, and it's just something that I've always said and it, it's where there is truth, the mm. darkness loses its power. Mm -hmm. No, it's a very spiritual qu type quote and I compare it to confession. I'm not a Catholic, but I am mm -hmm. very familiar with the practice of confession where you're going to go tell your sins to the priest and you'll be forgiven and you'll maybe do some penance and that kind of process. But when I'm thinking about where there is truth, the darkness loses its power. What I mean by that is when you can admit of who you are, when you can be honest and truthful about what's going on inside of you, only then will it release its hold on you. So if that means being honest with yourself about what, where you're at in life, of what you're experiencing, any secrets that you might have, opening up and a, being a little bit vulnerable and allowing other people to be part of that with you. Uh, you know, and I'll just keep with the depression story. I remember a moment when I was extremely depressed and I sent an email to a friend and I said, I sent an email, I, didn't, I couldn't even text or call her, it was an email. And I just said, I'm feeling really depressed. I don't know what to do. And she, bless her, I will forever be indebted to her she wrote back right away. She said, I care about you. I'm coming to pick you up on Saturday morning. We're going to our running group <laughs> together. I'm paying for you to join the running group and I'm taking care of you. That is all it took. That is mm -hmm. all it took for me was that moment of being vulnerable and getting that response back. So where yeah. there's truth, where you can be honest with yourself, mm -hmm. where you can be vulnerable, all of that, all of those other things that are holding on to you, mm -hmm. You'll be so amazed at how they'll start. They just start start releasing their hold. Uh, you know, I I love how um, when we when we talk about um, you know just the 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 boundaries we even set within ourselves. We're like, well, you know, um, you know, in the military we used to say we embrace the suck. And there's a reason we embrace the suck because we know it's going to suck. And there's something about honest about that. And I actually kind of freeing because the thing yes. is, if I know it's going to suck, then I prepare myself. You know, um, the thing it's, 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 e it's, I don't know how to say irrational to think everyone I'm going to meet, I'm going to like, them. I'm going to get along with, and we're going to be amazing friends. It, or they're going gonna... to like me that they're going <laughs> to like me. <laughs> But at the same time, it shouldn't like as we kind of grow. I feel we we as we set boundaries, we're actually saying you know our time is valuable. We are valuable. You know, um, no one's gonna set the you know set boundaries for you. No one's gonna say um, your time is valuable except yourself. And that's part of like the growing process because yeah, you may make a misstep, but you know how many other people when it comes to connections, we can be extremely socially awkward. We can really struggle in these things because we don't know what to say. And a lot of times those fears, like when we get set up with a structure, sometimes it tells us kind of this, it can, I'll say, it can tell you this, um, this kind of lie that there is certainty to this kind of structure. 
which I would say even if it runs well for a while, there's times when it won't. Um, uh, James Thurber says, let us not look back in anger, nor forward in fear, but around in awareness. It's, mm. it's, it's kind of just remembering that we are, you know, we, this, you know, at least for me, when I, I never did this line of work in mental health before when I started like a year ago or so, I just remember it's very humbling how little I can do <laughs> how little I can do like I would do like I would help I'll listen I'll talk and, and one of the things you mentioned your friends I would listen and you know that's wonderful because they feel heard how many people want to feel heard uh, I remember uh, Rachel namely Remen said this the willingness to consider possibility requires a tolerance of uncertainty we cannot have like certainty there without hope so put, hope is a only exists when there is uncertainty because you, if you knew what everything was uh, was going to happen we wouldn't need anything sometimes i think sometimes fear can be crippling i'm not saying it's every case but i do encourage like you said to you know kind of allow yourself to breathe allow yourself to diversify and kind of see what works for you it's like whether it and a connection is different i realize that for everyone what that means is different, you know, but at the same time, don't say it's always this. It's never siempre in Spanish. <laughs> it's not always something. So it's, it's always, it can be something else. And that actually can change as you grow and move forward. And I, I just want to kind of ask any final thoughts you'd like to share, Kyla, as we wrap up. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking about everything that we've talked about. You know, you mentioned, um, uh, Victor Frankl earlier for everybody listening, his book, A Man's Search for Meaning. I highly recommend that. It talks a lot about finding meaning in our lives, even in the worst of times. You know, he was a Holocaust survivor. And um, so he just has some really, and a psychotherapist, uh, psychiatrist so he has some really incredible thoughts on on just looking for meaning we talked about boundaries we talked about um finding fulfillment we talked about the ebb and flow of life and finding rhythms so you know i'm just thinking you know if there's if if you're looking as as a listener and if you're listening for some hope some some ways to um healing to balance and well-being they're out there and and it is possible and i don't ever want you to feel discouraged or like it's not po it's possible for other people except for you that's not true because at one point i thought that about myself and here i am on a podcast talking to you all about what it looks like to have a life full of um a, a full life um full of joy and, and you know i have that and i don't have it every moment no but i have it quite a quite a lot um and you know i think that there's just so much I'm so glad you said the word hope because I, I, I think everything that I do is fueled by hope and connection and um, this hope that that something wonderful is going to happen next yeah. and and there's this transformation and also I don't know what's on the other side of tomorrow. Yeah. You yeah. know, I remember being 15 and having no idea that someday I'd speak two languages, travel the world. Uh, do a podcast. I didn't even know, I don't know if that even existed when I was 15. You know, I had no imagination at all. And hope is just this imagination of possibilities of our future. And, and there's so much excitement and so much good things about that. So absolutely, you know, and um, if there's anything I can do to help you in that journey, I am here for you. Um, I am the, like I said earlier, the host of the Leadership School podcast. I'll put this up here. You can take a listen where we talk with leaders from around the world about all of these things, integrity, well-being, leadership skills. Um, so take a take a listen. It's on wherever you find your podcasts. And um, you can find me at Kyla Kofer. That's K-Y-L-A-C-O-F-E-R.com. Um, and I'd be happy to walk with you and or to answer your questions um, because I've been through I've been through these things. I, I have. Um, and I'm, I'm constantly learning and growing like we all are there's no perfection in it there's no i've made it it's <laughs> it's this constant um growing and learning that i'm looking forward to be doing for my entire life well i just want to say thank you like i um those listening and watching all the information that she mentions will be in the notes so you can check her out and all the things that she's doing thank you so much for sharing just a bit of your story you know i just feel whenever i tell my 
guests. I I always feel good when I I always I always I don't like goodbyes, so I always say I'll see you later because I like to I like returning guests because it always just it's it just builds a community. So thank you again for joining us. Um, remember, just, for those listening, remember to stay updated with all things Revive Ministries and uh, Revive Ministries FL is our website. This is goodbye from Revive Ministry Podcast. Leaving with the last quote: um, Just like you always, just like there's always time for pain, there's always time for healing. Jennifer Brown.